up, y'all? This is uh, Bam the Liquid Robot. How y'all doing? Hmm. Right. Can you give us a little background about where you're from and your upbringing? Uh, I'm from Lower East Side, Puerto Rican. Uh, been dancing for about since uh, 1981. In uh, 78, I learned the robot, watching uh, what's happening. Slim is the man. Slim is the man. A lot of people don't talk about Slim, but Slim is the man. If you see my YouTube videos, I have the jacket that lights up. Of course, it's because I saw Slim. Uh, and the lockers, actually. And then uh, Robert Shields. I saw Robert Shields on TV uh, doing his mime and, you know, the whole neck. Came from him. And, uh, and the Jackson 5, man. Dancing Machine. So I started with the robot and then came to New York. Well, I'm originally from New York. I just moved to Philly for about two years, and I learned the robot there from a guy on the street, and then came back to New York where I started to learn the electric boogie style from Boney Rock and another guy named Poppin' Pete. And as time went on, I got to learn about other groups. I heard of Wiggles uh, and Fable. I met Fable first at the Wild Style filming. So I approached him, and uh, Fable was no joke, man. He had, he had on a doctor suit, the white gloves, and his style, man, Fable's style, if you know about Fable, he was all about style, and he inspired me with style and, and that whole New York boogie. And then I met, I met Wiggles, and, um, and I, I met him on Cherry Street on the hill by Junior High School 56 on the Lower East Side, they were filming. Um, so someone told me, yo, they're on the hill filming, they already know, and I already knew about them. You know, they know YouTube back then, you just hear it, right? Reputation. So I ran over to see, and um, I got to see them live, him and him and them. Wiggles and Fable, and I just, yo, he was ill, man. To me, Wiggles was bugged out. He was real puppety, wiggly, electric, and he just had a million moves. I was always like, damn, how do you remember so many moves? And then time went on, and I met um, Taco, Pete, Shrimp, Shabadoo. Shabadoo inspired the way I I love the way Shabadoo puts his gear together. So when I would see him do his thing, it worked, man. The belt, the raccoon tail. So I give that, you know, that respect to Shabba doing up his style too, you know, you get something from everybody, um, and so on, you know. So just been dancing for years, and uh, I got to work with Wiggles, obviously jam on the groove, got down with that, and um, Disco Dave, Shake, Jazzy J, and all these guys eventually all meeting up and, and hooking up in the New York scene, you know. New generation is hot too. You know what though about the new generation is, um, you know, they pop, they're flexing their muscle, they're, they're pop, pop, pop. They don't look as electric as the guys did in the 80s. And why do you think that is? I think it's because they're trying to hit too hard. It's not hitting hard, it's letting it go. Pop, pop, right? Pop, 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 pop. And when they move in between, pop, pop, then it's going to look, oh, it looks electric. Some of them don't look electric. You can see they're popping their muscle, but it doesn't look electric. See, it's electric boogaloo, electric Boogie. They're popping, they're snapping. So when you look at the illusion, some of the illusion is gone. Jazzy J, when he pops, has that illusion. You could see that he looks electric. And he's boogling and it's like, it's real dope. And um, even me, I, you know, we, we tend to lose it a little bit. Oh, everybody has a sense of looking electric, but it's not as phenomenal as, as it could be. So I think we have to j get into that whole popping thing where we keep it looking electric, you know? Um, yeah. You know, why, why do you think the, um, it was lost? Why do you think the soul, the funk, the electric, like, how did it lose its luster from the 80s through the 90s all the way up into the you know, new millennium? How is it that dance is losing its luster at, at, at a point where, you know, it's being so uh, exploited right now? It, even in a good way and in, in its bad ways, but right now, dance is real popular, but it seems to have lost its luster. So why do you think it's lost its luster, even though it's still getting more popular? Oh, you know what though? I think th there's both. There's two sides now. I think the the approach that the new generation has, I, I love it because they they're pushing the bar as to what more you can do with boogaloo, especially like in Virginia. I was in I was in D.C. I went to a popping competition over there, and those kids are mixing, waving, popping, robot. It's all in one. They have no limits and no boundaries. And what they're doing is phenomenal. And a lot of them got that popping illusion. They look electric. It looks like a, a robot that can dance. A funky robot. It's out of the stiffness. It's very funky, but it, it, it's got that electric thing out there. And um, so it's, some people, you know, 
I don't think it's losing the luster. I think I think there's the spirit and the energy they're approaching it with. Everyone is so hungry to want to be somebody, and they're not caring for each other. They're afraid of each other because when you when you talk amongst each other, it's like a dysfunctional family. You know, you don't you don't trust your brother. He's got a bad attitude. He doesn't care. He's gonna eat all the chicken. So you want to eat the chicken first. So it's like that. If I don't go after this job, you're not gonna tell the producer that I'm a good dancer. Everyone's afraid of each other. And, and I think that, you know, um, so they're all in a rush to get good, to become part of Hollywood, to make money, so they, they don't care about the dancing as much as they do with the cool move. So they want to get the cool move and say, look, I can boogaloo, I can do this, and, and just forget the whole art form, you know what I mean? Like, you got guys that are making money now, and, um, and, they, and they're, they're famous, and... And, and, and if, they, if they could stop and say, you know what, there's more, you know, and they can, they can, uh, they, they don't have to get, take the credit for something they didn't create, like a move, you know, if, if they could just get into that and, and be humble and keep going, and then they'll get more respect. Because if, How have you able, been able to balance your career, you know, from all the way to the 80s up until now, you've kept a level head, um, you stayed, you told me you stayed away from the drugs, how did you? How did you, how were you able to do that and not get caught up in your career? How were you able to stay focused and stay balanced? Because a lot of people, you know, they didn't survive the 80s. You know, they, a lot of people didn't survive the 90s, you know, with Dan. Some people just give up. How were you able to stay balanced in your career? You know, I, I stepped back. You know, you have to take like three steps backwards sometimes, right? I was caught up in there for a minute. And who you hang out with, you, you kind of become like that. And I was surrounded with everyone arguing. I invented this. I'm the first that did that or this came from here, and then I, I got caught up in that, and then I caught myself and said, man, this, this is not right. So I, I stepped back and I watched everyone, and then I started to realize that, that we have to become humble and, um, and give credit where credit is due. You know, so, so my survival became this, um, become my own thing, be a better person. Not, the dance moves are always there, but that's not gonna get me anything as much as my character or my person. So I had to step back and become a different type of man. So I said to myself, I, I'm not about arguing, I'm about peace. And I'm about sharing the dance, not about using the dance to, to try to be somebody that you gotta worship because I got a cool move. I wanna share with you and I wanna be friends, I wanna be family, say, hey, you got something to say, Let's talk with dancing and let's share, the, let's share the circle. Insecurity comes from a person who doesn't believe they're really good. You gotta work at yourself. So I have to be confident in me, I have to work on me. So I stepped back and I said, when am I gonna become this different? I learned to perform. I learned to, be, to create solos, not go downs. A go down is easy. A couple of seconds in a circle, a band move. But can you perform for an hour without tiring a crowd? I had to push that limit. So that's when the robot solo came out in 99. That's old. Some people tell me, oh, that's whack. But it's in 99. My new solo I won't put up because y'all going to copy it. <laughs> you know, so, but I put my whole show up. And now I'm going to perform it for the first time in China, you know? So when I'll be going in January, it's because I've been, you know, meeting with people. So you become your own thing. You become loving. And you try to show others, you know what? Just help them to create and, and package themselves and, and become that, you know? And that was my survival. Not getting caught up in that and showing people a little bit different, you know? And creating my own show where I could keep getting booked. So what do you suggest for the dancers currently dancing now? What do you suggest, I mean, everybody has their own path, but what do you suggest for them, you know, to do as far as to go from street dancing, maybe even into commercials or into performing? Like, what do you suggest for them? Should they get an agent or, you know, what, what route do you suggest for a street dancer? With, it's so many routes, but which route do you suggest that they should go first? You know that everybody's individual, right? You, you, um, what's, the door that's presented to you is how God talks to you. You might meet an agent right there. That's God saying, hey, I'm gonna hook you up this way. You have to find out what works for you. Some dancers are really good looking models. He or she may be a certain height, and that'll be the door that'll work for you. Some other dancers don't have that. Some of the dancers have a different talent that complements the dancing. They might be good at producing a beat, and then using that to make pop and beats because they like to pop, or lock, or break. 
everybody has an individual thing in them that sticks out. So we can't say this is going to work for you. You'll know as, as that strength in you, that talent in you starts to enhance itself. You know what I mean? I'm a good story writer, storyteller. I'm good at producing shows. I've done it for Break, Durban Phone Spectacular. I directed that, which I had uh, flips, technique, flea that are now in step up three and two and all that. They really came to my show. I saw them on a tape. The producer told me, what do you think about these guys? I said, bring them up. So I was part of the hiring process. So we discovered talent and then we teach them. They toured with us and they learn. You know, and we teach people to become more. Acting, I was always saying you gotta act. And that's because Gregory Hines told me that. Gregory Hines said, hey Bam, you gotta act. He told me that in Jam on the Groove. He told all of us, and then on the side he's like, yeah, acting. So, you know, everybody's an individual. You gotta find that thing that, that complements your dance, you know? You have, uh, you have so many great moments. What are, what are some of your greatest accomplishments? And what are you currently working on now? Oh, uh, you know that, that when The Matrix came out, I was already used to doing the solos. So I started creating again. I said, man. So I created the solo, The Matrix, where I do the movie, but it, it's a storytelling piece. But hip hop, you know, all kind of goes into lights, the lights turn off, and my jackets turn on. After I created that, I said, man, um, I'm going to keep on. I, wanna, I don't want to stop until I do 10 different distinct different pieces where I can perform and then so my mindset was my accomplishment saying so, you know, I said you know I could push the bar just like Sammy Davis Jr. and that's who I wanted to be like some people say Michael Jackson no when, when it comes to Michael his dressing the way he approaches his work ethic phenomenal and then when I see Michael dance I see a lot of West Side Story